Hello and good day to all of you. So, we will continue our discussion on fault calculations under the power system analysis topic. So, just a recap what we have discussed on the last slide. We discussed symmetrical faults and the formulas involving uh, uh, short circuit calculations, especially for three-phase faults. So, we already established this formula there this formula by the way i want to discuss a little bit of uh, fault calculations you have two types of faults calculations here you have the unsymmetrical fault and the symmetrical fault respectively and both of these faults are called shunt faults because it is derived on an open generator but we will discuss this more deeply when we go to uh, uh, the uh, topic of fault calculations and this fault calculation on the unsymmetrical faults has also some derivations which is dependent on the sequence network okay now in this case the symmetrical faults here we have the ISC uh, simply equal to I full load times 100 over percentage x1 this looks fun to all of us simply because your I full load here is your base current so your i base here is at s base all over the square root of three of your v base now this is also the same thing on the next few formulas that you can you will encounter here because that is already a constant parameter now we also introduce some reactances because this x1 here is the so-called positive sequence reactance you can also encounter another variable, which is XO, which is your zero sequence reactance. And last but not the least, the X2 here, which is the, C, uh, the uh, negative sequence reactance. Okay, now, this is established when the voltage and the current are on the same phase. So, based on derivations, which we will not tackle on this refresher, it is concluded that in every network or any equipment modeling, the positive, negative, and zero reactances is existing. So, it means it's natural to have those reactances. Now, in terms of the per unit value or the per unit equivalent circuit all of the values on the per unit equivalent circuit that we have described you now on the last slides is your positive sequence so as you can see here this is looks spam because this x here is your xth or tevinis reactance of the default point that you will also use when the power system is loaded but anyway in our derivation today we considered only open okay on the derivation open, you have the same um, uh, equation that you will be uh, you will be uh, the equation that will be derived no, on those um, uh, uh, components. Okay, now in this case, if this is x one, which is your x t h at the fault, now we can also get the components of the fault currents. So it is also important because on the board exam. Uh, they uh, some of the questions can be uh, uh, what is the zero component of the fault current of uh, of a three phase fault what is the negative sequence component for a fault current for a single line to ground fault so like those questions so in this case in a symmetrical fault when three conductors are symmetric symmetrically uh, short circuited there's no zero component there's no a negative component as well but you have okay the positive component which is ISE three phase so therefore we can conclude no on a symmetrical fault only the uh, positive sequence component is present only the positive sequence component is present on a symmetrical fault. Okay, please take note. You need to memorize this simply because this is very, very important. 
Okay, for a uh, another type of fault with a line-to-line -line fault, it means that if you have a generator, then you have these phases. You short-circuited, okay, two lines. Okay, for this, if it is A, this B and C, and this is open, I short-circuited here B and C, and I derive the fault current here, which is equal to IB and which is ne negative of IC. Okay, so hopefully you can see on this picture. Okay, so an ISC line-to-line -line is a line-to-line -line fault or sometimes called a two-phase fault. Now, based on the derivation, which is, I will tackle this definitely on one of the topics on unsymmetrical faults, derivation of formulas is, IIC line-to-line is equal to I base or full load current times 100, no? All over X1 plus percentage X2. By the way, I forgot to mention on this formula, there's a square root of 3. Okay, there's a square root of 3 ah. here. Square root of 3. Okay? So, your ISC line to line simply equal to the square root of 3 of the full load current or base current times 100 all over percentage X1 plus percentage X2, which is your positive and negative sequence component of the reactants. By the way, I forgot to mention, uh, this reactance is here can be percent or per unit. So what's the difference between per unit and percent? It's like a decimal. If you multiply the decimal by, by 100, you have a percentage. Okay? So in this case, ISC line to line is equal to square root of 3 of the I base times 100 all over percentage X1 and X2. The technique here is this. If this if the denominator is percent, there must be a 100%. Or what I always tell on the class, it's like on the character uh, on a uh, um, on an anime which is Ghost Fighter, sandaang porsyentong taguro. Kung may porsyento, if there's a percent, there is a taguro here, one hundred percent. Kaya it is one hundred. It must be in percent. So it means if there's a numerator 100, the denominator of the reactants is first. By the way, this is flexible, the reactance is simply because it can be resistance, it can be impedance. I just use reactances because in a system, power system already, your bigger power system, your major concern is more on percentage reactances. So that is a little bit of 5% uh, of, er of the error if you include the uh, minimal resistances on the transmission lines. But anyway, if you have a bigger power system and you want to get the Thevenin's reactance of that in terms of react uh, reactance only, you have a little bit of error. But this for simplification purpose. So in this case, yes, it can be you no know, X, R, or Z if you want to, if that is an open generator and you have only uh, re resistance or impedances on the system. Please take note, when you say impedance, you're considering R and X here. Okay. How about the components of the full current? IA1 is equal to ISC line to line or two phase fault divided by the square root of three. There's no ground involved okay, on the line to line. So it is IA0 is equal to zero. And IA2 or the negative component is negative of IA1. So don't forget that anti or the negative value there. So for this, these are the first batch of the full currents. So we will discuss ISC single line to ground and double line to ground to the next slide. From, uh, uh, to the next slide. So please stay tuned. Okay, now we will discuss the next type of unsymmetrical fault, which is uh, the uh, single line to ground fault. This is uh, 2.C, by the way. This is 2, rather 2.B. Sorry for that. Okay, now, before we go to the formula, but we will not discuss in detail the derivation. So, I just gave, I will give you the fault condition. So, we can consider, okay, this is the fault condition. Okay, we can consider an open generator. So this is, again, all of the formulas that we will derive here are for an open generator. 
and what will happen these formulas can be also uh, used in a loaded power system it means that if you have a real power system you can do you can also use these formulas but we will explain that in detail you no know, in a separate video okay the four conditions here is if you have an open condi uh, open generator and this is your uh, I could say this EA this EB and EC and then we have also VA VB and VC all of them are, are up to the neutral okay this is the point n so these are terminal voltages okay these are terminal vo oh, sorry that those are terminal voltages but your ea eb and ec here are the so-called phase voltages of their generator so in that case uh, you have here IA, IB and IC is flowing to an op uh, open. There's no load. But your if you if we uh, if we uh, have a single line to ground fault, we can ground A to N, short circuiting the conductors of your phase A to N, leaving behind IB and IC as open. By the way, uh, you can also short circuit B and C. But when we derive the formulas here, we always use this as a default even on single phase system or three phase systems our reference is line a always at line a okay for this you can have your ia as your single line to ground fault that we will derive you know on a separate video va is zero because the voltage at a is in shorted with the neutral but IB and IC does not have any current because it is flowing to nothing. So therefore, IB and IC are both zero. Okay, let's go to the formula. Okay, if we uh, derive the uh, formula in terms of symmetrical components, sequence network, and then a little bit of KB, a little bit of circuits, we can arrive at this formula here. That the ISC single into ground is simply equal to three times of the base current which is S base all over square root of V base times 100%. Please take note of the Taguro formula. If there is 100, may sanda ang porciento or 100%. So the denominator is in percent here. So you have percentage X1 plus percentage X2 plus percentage XO plus 3 times percentage CN. Please take note. It is also the similar way in having this relationship, right? To get the actual value, you need to have the base times what? The per unit. So the per unit current here definitely is this. Right? The per unit value. You involve 3 as well. Okay? The IFL here is simply your I base. So if you can correlate all of the formulas that we're doing here. Because here, the ISC single line to ground is the actual value so the answer here is definitely is in actual terms ah uh, amperes because base times per unit is your actual value or simply per unit is actual over the base okay as we have described on our uh, first few meetings or first few uh, slides okay uh here we have a new parameter the uh, reactor reactance neutral or impedance neutral so the neutral impedance so zn is your neutral impedance always remember that it's always three times by the way uh it will be uh, will be eliminated if and only if the system is a solidly ground or simply y ground so zn zero and thus if you want to get the components IAO or IA0 simply equal to ISC short circuit of the single line to ground you divide it by 3 or IA0 and IA1 and IA2 in a single line to ground fault they are the same please take note there is already an existence of the zero component simply because you're involving now the ground on the calculation of the fault okay so let us move on to the ISC DLG on the next slide we will discuss now the uh, next type of uh, fault 
which is a double line to ground fault or the so-called ISC DLG okay now we will consider again the open generator here okay this also the same thing with uh, 2.b but the only difference is you have an open genset and these are your generators there are also components there your drop and your pace voltages that instead we use here the same way on a line to line fault the IB and IC are grounded or short circuited and also grounded to the okay um, your uh, neutral so in this case if B and C are grounded VB and BC are the same but definitely they are now zero why simply because they are parallel to a short now what are the other fault conditions which is it will give you an insight on how you will derive the formulas which here at is mentioned on the right side but I will not discuss in detail the derivation that will be in a separate video again so in this case the fault current now on the first fault condition is IB and IC by KCL at this point is simply equal to IB plus IC so that is the fault current next VB and BC are short-circuited to a, to a ground so definitely the zero components is now present so it is zero and IA is zero because the current is flowing to nothing but please take note that VA will not be equal to zero okay because it is an open uh, circuit it's an open circuit there's still voltage okay one thing that we need to uh, know here so that you can understand the formula on the right side is the sequence network you have the positive negative and zero network which compose of impedances and currents with the same sequence so as you can see here the positive sequence uh, uh, positive, positive sequence network is this positive components here the negative components is here and the zero component is here with the same sequence they are connected in parallel simply because the components okay that you will derive in a double line to ground fault the voltages of the terminals of the components are the same so if you have voltage that is connected in parallel simple circuits again they are the same by the way i forgot to mention one thing here i use here z zero prime which yields k2 that z0 prime here is z0 the component k okay, plus the involvement of the impedance to neutral so i use impedance here to become a generic so it means if your impedance is just resistance you put r if your impedance is just in uh, inductance, uh, inductance or reactance rather you put x Okay, without further ado, you can have a KCL, no, at this point location. Okay, for example, that's uh, the common ground. I could say, uh, not ground, you have the ground here, X, point X, for example. The currents flowing to KCL at X, the same, um, the same point. So, it means IA1, IA2 plus I0, zero. So, when you arrange IA1, simply equal to the antiphasor of ia1 ia0 plus ia2 please take note that this equation is your checking equation at the end simply because if you want to get if you want if you want to get all of the components and then you want to check if your answer is correct please take note it must have this uh, relationship or ia1 if you add ia2 and ia0 they must be in equal to zero okay without further ado let us have the formula here that IAC double line to ground is simply equal to three times your base current I full load times 100 okay if there is a 100 all of the reactances must be in percent in Tagalog kung may isang daang porsyentong taguro okay without further ado this is also the same thing in, when you recall delta to y y to delta I think this is the cumulative sum so x2 x1 x2 x0 the last term x1 and x0 please take note that x0 prime is also correlated here so it means that x of 0 prime is x0 plus 3zn by the way 
I forgot to mention this on the last few slides. How about if I want, don't, uh, if all of the given is per unit? Can we also have uh, have a relationship in terms of per unit per unit reactances? You can see here all of the reactances in per unit and also on the last few slides. You can do so. If this is only one, therefore all of the parameters here of the x must be in per unit. So it means that all of the percentages here, you can have it as x2 per unit, x1 per unit, x2 per unit, xo prime per unit, x1 per unit, xo prime per unit. As long as this is 1, not 100. Because, please take note, na isang daang porsyent tong taguro, o 100%, if you have 100, the reactance must be in percent. If you have 1, you have per unit. Okay, without further ado, for the components, we will make use of this network diagram later. So, for getting the uh, zero component, just divide ISC double leg to ground by 3. Now, the question is, how can I get IA1 and IA2. So please take note that you must go to the sequence network and apply, okay, this is CDP, current divider principle. Okay, so I can assume, this is just an assume, that my current is on the downward motion here, IA2 and IA0. And then I can apply, and IA1, we will stick at IA1 on the upward position. I can uh, assume that IA2 and I1 so that I can implement the current divider principle. So, again, review that the current divider principle is if I want to get the current here, IA0, I must have the total. This is the total current, which is IA1, definitely. And then, here is the adjacent impedance. You take the adjacent impedance, Z, Z2, and take, no, the total impedances or the sum of the total impedance connected in parallel. So this will be only on parallel circuits, huh? So you can go back no to the uh, to our last few lectures, especially on DC circuits, if I'm not mistaken, on lesson 1.5 on DC networks. Okay, now in this case, well, I uh, IA zero is IA one, Z two. All over Z2 plus Z0 prime. Please take note that we already computed IA0. Now you can now get IA1 by rearranging the equations. And please take note, all of these impedances are given. By the way, one more thing. You must con be consistent on the unit. If the unit is percent, therefore the impedances must be in percent as well. If the unit is in per unit, so, your impedance is in per unit. And last but not the least, your impedance is in ohms. So, therefore, it must be in ohms as well. So, the unit is plays a vital role no, in, in, uh, in the calculation parts. Okay, now, if you want to get okay, the, uh, uh, the negative component of the current, so, again, current divider principle. To get IA2 here, the total current IA1 and then the adjacent impedance. So ZO prime, this is ZO prime by the way. And then divided by, by the sum of the impedances connected in parallel. Z, Z, Z2 plus Z0. So you already computed for IA2. So that completes the cast formulas. And a little bit of principle, but not in detailed uh, derivation of all the fault calculations. So we will go now to the applications or problem solving. See you there.